Right, today we're here, we're going to do a spot of margin fishing. Obviously, you need a good strong pole for that. Here at Aston Park, he's got a nice pole, Alice, so you're able to come down and test the products out. We've got three margin poles in the range, two that interchange with the sphere, one that interchanges with the Exciton range. Obviously, dead strong, you're able to put the, the interchange with the poles, so you're able to use them as a spare, and also you're able to put the butt sections at the back of them. If you ever want to reach them long margins, these are the poles for you. Let's go catch some fish. So, margin fishing. This is one of my favourite ways of fishing. Simply because you can get yourself out of jail down here. I've done it many a times in the past. You know, you come to the end of a match, you go down the edge and you get yourself out of jail and all of a sudden you go from zero to hero. Let me just talk to you about terminal tackle. Terminal tackle for your edge needs to be strong. It's all about durability, it's all about strength. So, there's no messing in anything. In anything I use, there's no messing. The line I've tied all my rigs onto is 021. No messing about, 020 or 021, that sort of diameter is something that I always tie my rigs onto. I still use a hook length, regardless of whether I'm fishing in six foot or three foot, or you know, I always use a hook length. The simple reason is because if you ever have any accidents, you have to snag up or anything, you can come back, replace your hook length, and you're fishing. So, rig, 020, all the way down to a, to a four inch hook length, of today it's a little bit cooler we're just getting coming out at uh, winter time but it's the time when fish are starting to look for bait so all i've got is a slightly toned down version of my summer rig the only toned down bit is my hook length i'm on to uh, 050 uh, 016 bottom to a 16 hook generally when it comes to summer and the fish are really feeding and they're really confident and coming down the edge i'll fish 018 i'll fish 021 to 018 and a big 14 hook today because it's a little bit cool and we're just starting to get into some you know margin side of things i've got 020 to 050 uh, 016 the floats your floats have got to be durable end of the day the only reason the fish come down the edge is to feed you know it's not a natural place for them to hang about the, the reason they come down is to have a look and to have a chew so your float needs to be durable the floats i use again the handmade i have them handmade for me i designed the floats to make sure they're nice and robust and the, th the thing that i do you that i do do which is quite interesting really is i always use heavy floats always use heavy floats for down the edge simple reason is because i put my hook baits in and i don't want my float to move when a big fish comes in the peg if your if your bait if your rig wafts about you want it to instantly go back to the bottom so you don't foul up fish the worst thing you can do is have a light rig down the edge because what happens is when the fish are feeding down the edge they come in, they waft your, your rig about, your, your rig blows up, it can come back down, it can catch the fins. It's the worst thing that can happen because obviously you foul up the fish then. If, if by having a heavy rig, it lands straight back down to the bottom with your hook bait, the fish are down and you can nail the fish. Simple. Again, back shot. I think I've gone over this before, I always use back shot. Simple reason is because when I'm fishing down the edge, especially when it's so shallow, I have a long, I have a long lash between my flow and my tip. I do this because I can then lift my pole tip away from where I'm fishing. So I, I land my rig in, into the water and then I can pull my pole tip away from where I'm fishing. I think this is very, very important, at this time, especially this time of year, when the fish aren't so confident, but they're coming down for a little look and the, and the water's a little bit more clear. So two back shot back of there. Elastic. Again, it's slightly toned down to my summer elastics. Summer elastics I use is, is the stretch set, is a stretch seven, is a 12 plus which is a green color it's nice and thick although it's soft on the strike so your fish are able to swim out it's still uh, nice and strong this is a slightly toned down version which again it's, it's just one step down again it's in the same range this is a 10 plus it's the white car it's the 10 plus and for me again it's just nice and soft because i don't want to disturb the fish once i hook them i want them to swim out naturally and i'm able to gain control over them and that's it dead dead simple just go over shotting. Shotting's nice and simple. I just have a bulk straight above my four inch hook length. And that's because of what I said before in the fact that when fish comes in, you want your hook bait nailed to the bottom. By having a bulk down there, that's exactly what it does. So baits for edge fishing. Something I like to keep quite simple. For me, feed wise, there's only two baits that I normally feed. One of them's micros and the other one's ground bait. There's a couple of combinations and the reasons why I use the two. One is depth and the other's time of year. Now, when, it, when it's this time of year, something that's just coming out of winter time, I like to use micros. Simple reason is because I don't quite think they're onto the ground bait yet. The other one is depth. 
if for instance I get to a peg and my margin is too deep, I won't still try and feed ground bait. Simple reason is because when one comes in your peg, they waft it about and the ground bait becomes off the bottom. The fish can then come off the bottom and give you stupid indications. When it's like this, I use micro pellets. Simple reason is, although you don't think they are, they're quite heavy. So when they go down to the bottom, they normally stay down there. And if they do get wafted about, they then go straight back down again. It's not like ground bait, which, which circulates and, and, and obviously gets wafted within, within the water columns. Baits like micros come off the bottom and go straight back down again. So for me, they're the only two baits I feed. Hook baits. Really, really simple. I try and use something that's nice and visible, something that's big and visible that's in the face. This time of year, again, like I said, we're only maybe looking for two or three bites down the edge because, again, they're not looking for bait yet. So I try and use maggots. I try and use dead maggots, six or eight maggots, something like that. Something that gets me a bite or something that just makes sure that I hook a fish that comes in my peg. Now, I try not to be too selective because any fish that comes down my edge, at this time of year, I want to hook it. In the summertime, it's slightly different. You know, I'll, in the summertime, I use double corn, two worms, 10 maggots. It's a, it's a little bit different in the summer. But this time of year, I try and feed micro pellets and I fish maggots on the hook. Dead, dead simple. Right, I'm just gonna go through plumbing up. Obviously, plumbing up's quite important for down the edge because <laughs> without a plummet, you won't know what depth you had. Dead, dead simple, nice big plummet. And I'm just going to show you what to look for. Right, we'll get to the required depth. The reason I fish this depth, uh, this this length, is one just to get as far away as I can from myself. Uh, we have been silly. I've, I've fished 11 and a half meters today, down the banking. Right, and I'll show you what to look for. Now, this is a typical lake. You've got shelves, and obviously you've got you've got shelves coming up to the marginal cover. Now, where I fish today, I fish slightly away from the marginal cover. The simple reason is because, one, I've got a bit more depth, and two, the bottom, where the reeds are, because they're starting to die off and things like that, isn't that great. So where, I, where I've decided to fish now is about three foot away from the reeds, close enough to attract some fish away from the cover. Um, and the main reason is as well, because I've got the right depth there. Now, if it were dead shallow here, really shallow this time of year, really clear, I would probably try and come away a little bit more. Now, as you can see, as, as the closer I get to the reeds, the shallower it gets. So you're able to pick your depth, really. The nice depth, the depth for this time of year where the water is still quite clear is three foot. Three foot's a nice starting depth. So by, by coming away from the cover and just working that big plummet up, you're able to find the depth that you want. As you can see now, the closer I get, the shallower it gets. And there, there's, it's really shallow there. The side of that cover, it's really shallow. And the reason I haven't fished there is again, like I said, two reasons. One, it's too shallow at this time of year. And two, the bottom's not very good. So obviously these marginal stick-ups, uh, there's a lot of little roots and things like that. So by coming away to about there, that's where I've managed to catch all my fish today. Again, people ask me all the time, how far over depth do you fish? You know, all that sort of thing. Well, there's two things I will say. Never fish dead depth. Reason being is because when you fish dead depth down a margin and a big fish comes in, it's able to waft your bait up off the bottom too easily. By having a little bit of line on the bottom, your rig's dead stable because obviously, like I say, I've got all my shot down and a four inch hook length. I'm able to keep that, that rig dead static and dead stable. So for me there, as you can see there, it's halfway down my float. So that's, so for me, I'm fishing about three inch over depth. So two to three inch over depth is good in my opinion, because like I say, the bait is nailed to the bottom. You're not fishing dead depth, it's, it's, it's nailed to the bottom. Now, all I'll do then, to start, so I'll just put that to one side. Now to start my edge line off, as I say, we get to two hours to go, something like that, and you think, right, I'm just gonna start and introduce my bait. It's not like somewhere where you can put four pots of ground bait, five pots of ground bait. All you're looking to do is just put a little bit of bait in uh, and then gradually building that bait up. Like I said before, they're coming down, they're inquisitive at this time of year, they're looking for bait, but it's not like summer. So all I'll do is put a quarter of a pot of pellets in and a few dead maggots. The reason I'm putting dead maggots in is just a sample of up bait. 
that's all it is. Like I say, it's a bit different in somewhere you could put a big bed of ground bait or a big bed of pellets and you have two full worms or two, because that's a massive standout bait. At this time of year, I do like to just put a little sample of what I'm using on my hook. So, like I said, it's about a quarter of a, quarter of a pot full and all you'll do is introduce that. And again, like I say, in, in summertime, you're looking to put big pots over an area, keep this nice and tight. So you keep it nice and compact. So when a fish comes in, it's dead, dead easy for them to find your bait. So all I'll do, two hours to go, is I'll just put this little bit of a pot in. So like I say, you look for your far bank marker, so you're keeping everything nice and tight. And all you do is drop your pole to the surface and turn your pot. And that's it. Keeping it nice and tight is, like I said, dead on, right under your pole tip, right under your pole. So when one comes in, you've got a little compact area and the, and the fish obviously come and feed over that area and you, you're increasing your, your chance of getting the bite. And then all I'll do, once I hook a fish, like I said, because there weren't loads of bait there, once I hook a fish, I'll obviously guide it out of my peg. The, the bait will get wafted about, whatever any bait that's left. Um, so obviously you've got a massive area then. So all you need to do is repeat that process. Put a, a quarter of a pot of micros in, a few little, little bits of hook bait, drop it in nice and tight, then when you put your rig over, you've got a lovely little area to feed over. Perfect. So, like I said, just after that last fish, I've just just put a little bit of bait in. Again, like I was saying, I just put the bait in just so it just puts fish right in my pole tip. I managed to go out, and not long after, I've hooked this carp, which again, <laughs> it gave me a bit of a run around. But the main thing is, because I've got strong gear on, I've got the right equipment on, I managed to hook him and pull him straight away from that marginal cover. Now I always think that if you can get it into open water, I always feel that you give yourself a chance to land it. Because there's less areas for the fish to snag you. I say it's pulling, but you know, if you keep your pole tip nice and low, nice and low, and just let the elastic do all the work. And as I said, because you've got nice strong gear on, because of that marginal cover, the fish have come to eat, so, you know, they're not necessarily fussed about, you know, stupid little, um, stupid like gear. Now, one other thing I need to mention is landing nets and landing net handles. The landing net handle that I use is one from Browning. It's a fantastic handle. It's the ultra stiff Exciton. And the net is a new net that's just come out this year. It's a CK competition net, and it's designed just, just for this style of fishing. It's absolutely perfect for it. Now, when we were designing these nets, we thought about a few different key things on them. Depth. I think depth of a net, especially when the big fish is important, and the size of it. The thing is, because the big fish, it don't necessarily mean it have to be absolutely a massive net. It's, all, it's about the depth of them, making sure the depth's right. And I think we've done that on these CK competition nets. We've managed to do that, and as I say, along with this uh, with this exciting handle, everything's nice and strong. They're not going to let me down. I know once I get them into netting range, that I've got a good net. You know, it's not going to let me down. And also the the pole the pole itself, it's nice and stiff and nice and strong. Sometimes you only get one chance at these fish, 
and in a match situation there can be a match match winning fish so once they get within netting range it's important that you make sure that you get them in first time and it's no good chasing them about and things like that just take your time as i say you've got the right gear on so once you get them in within netting range just make sure you take your time and land the fish Good stamp fish, good size fish. This, as I say, we get, we're getting it within netting range now. So just make sure you give yourself a chance. There you go, absolutely perfect. You see, it's a big, big fish, but because of this landing at handle and landing at head, I'm able to land the fish pretty easily. Oh, he's a big old fish, he is. Great big old monster. But like I said, these are match winning fish. They're match winning fish, so you've got to you've got to just take your time, get them in, you know that your rigs and, and everything's right, everything's okay. Once you get them around netting range, just make sure. Oh god. Just make sure that you do everything right, and I can assure you, you use the right equipment, the right things, the right feeding, I'll guarantee you'll catch fish like that. <laughs>